You're listening to the Business Brain Food Podcast. This is episode 139. Welcome to the Business Brain Food Podcast, the show business owners listen to when they want to take their business to the next level. Head to businessbrainfood.com.au to catch up on past episodes and access show notes from every interview. Now, here's your host, Ben Futrell. Well, g'day and welcome back to the Business Brain Food Podcast. This, my friend, is the podcast that's 100% devoted to taking you and your business to the next level. And the good news is, it doesn't matter whether you're brand new to this business thing or maybe you're like uh, my and you've been in business for a long, long time, there's always something new you can do to take your business to the next level. And today is absolutely no different. Absolutely no different. And that was our much shorter, brand new introduction to get straight into the show. I uh, changed the format slightly so the uh, we get straight into the interviews after doing a bit of a survey across some of our listeners. Thank you for those of you that gave us that feedback. Uh, we now have a shorter introduction and we're going to get stuck straight into the main interview. So we no, no fluff, no wasting time, and you get value straight away to take your business to the next level. So today's guest is John Hollenberg, and I've got John on. John's an Aussie web development or web designer development uh, company owner. In fact, um, the reason why i got John on, he's actually authored a book called Love at First Sight. I love the name of this book, Love at First Sight, S-I-T-E, um, and he calls it a no BS guide to getting your website firing. And I think for every business owner on the planet, getting your website working is paramount because we put all this time and effort into building a website, we spend a lot of money doing it, and then sometimes we just don't get the results that we want to get from it. And John gives us a whole bunch of results reasons why websites don't work. Um, if you haven't changed your website in the last probably five years, a whole bunch of things that you could do to make it better. And then we talk about what it is exactly that he's talking about uh, when he talks about turning your, uh, your your you into a rock star online with your business website actually generating leads, gets your phone ringing, your inbox full inquiries, whatever it is that you want to do. He's got over 18 years of experience in the web industry. He's a expert in online marketing, online growth strategy. And over the last 10 years, he's worked with iconic brands such as Qantas, Jeep and the Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary, plus hundreds of other businesses across Australia. Uh, and as I said before, he's a published author, and I think you're going to absolutely love uh, this chat that I have with John Hollenberg. So, without any further delay, let's get him straight on to the Business Brain Food Podcast. Business Brain Food. Well, knowing that websites are such an important part of business these days, and it's important that you have a website that does the job, that, that converts leads into paying customers, it's super fantastic to have John joining us on the Business Brain Food Podcast today. Welcome to the podcast, my friend. Thank you very much for having me, Ben. Hey, my absolute pleasure. Now, before we do get stuck into talking about what makes a website work and, and to quote you, uh, turn people's websites into rock stars that generate leads, uh, we want to find out a little something quirky about yourself. It's time for Something Quirky. And now, Something Quirky. Something Quirky. Uh, so, Something Quirky is, I my, my actual, my formal name, my real name is Johannes, which is actually a Dutch name. Uh, and my uh, my son also has the same name. He is the seventh Johannes. And uh we we have a family tradition the eldest son is named that so there was no pressure on my shoulders uh when naming my son but uh basically that's that's a little bit of family tradition and uh something that i'm really proud of wow well there you go it's good to have family tradition i think do you have the uh, the number after your name like are you <laughs> johannes the fifth and johannes the first and- uh, no, it's sort of like taking it to the next level but uh, we joke around about that so yeah it's, it's- <laughs> I reckon that'd be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like King Henry the Eighth or whatever. So uh, no, it's 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 a nice tradition, and uh, nice. I'm super proud to continue yep. that on. And is that is that a Dutch thing to do? Or is that just something your family did? Uh, it's just something that I think started, you know, about probably uh, 150, 200 years ago. Wow! And, uh, wow! Just through. So yeah, no, no pressure on my son's shoulders. And does does that get a little confusing at home when someone calls out, or you you managed to work that out? Well, he, his actual name is Jan, which is Dutch for John, um, and that's that's a really common name over there. What gets really confusing is when we go on a family holiday. So I've got my son, myself, and my father, and we all check in at the same time, and we've all got exactly the same name. So that's that sort of sends the uh, the check in crew into a bit of a tailspin. 
<laughs> I, I, wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be in that check-in count anyway. I'm sure, I'm sure there's many, many of other funny stories where, where that would become a problem, but we'll we'll yeah. uh, we'll move on because I think it's really important. Small business owners or any business owner these days is struggling with this online world, and I think I mean we still see businesses that don't have websites. Uh, but I'm interested. You know, you've you've written this book, Love at First Sight, and I love the name of the book, by the way. I think it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. But there are many, many web designers out there claiming to do what you do, which is, you know, which is their sales pitch. Here's how we sell what websites. So I'm interested to hear from you what makes you different and how you really do get results for your customers. Because I've heard some great things about what you do and the results that you get. So maybe, maybe take us way back when. What what got you into web design or web development, and then turning that into not just designing websites, but websites that actually work. Yeah, okay. So starting out, uh, I actually built my first website when I was about 15, 16 years old, sitting there in my, my board shorts in my room, tinkering around with HTML, uh, building a, a family friends website and really enjoyed that. And I was, I was big into like graphics and, and also computing. So uh, website design was, was sort of like an up and coming field back then. That was like sort of 90, 96, 97. And uh, it was a way of me combining the two. So uh, ended up studying a Bachelor of Multimedia there at Monash University in Melbourne. Uh, and then my first job out of that was uh, in a small business. So I got thrown in the the deep end, got sent out on my first sales call with a prospective client, literally the, the second day on the job, um, and and I just got hooked. I got hooked on both the business side of things and also the, the creative and the technical side of things, so it was sort of like the ultimate trifecta, and uh, I'd always been involved in small business, uh, so uh, this business in this form is coming up 12 years now. Uh, thousands of sites delivered, and uh, you know we're growing a, a good, good, profitable business that's delivering a tremendous amount of value uh, to our clients. Yeah, good stuff, great stuff. Um, so let's get stuck straight into the nitty gritty because I mean, do you still see a lot of uh, businesses that don't have a website at all? Yeah, surprisingly, there are a lot, and I was actually re- I revisited that statistic sort of recently, and. Um, I think it's still like 40, 45%. Like there's, there's like a big number of websites, sorry, businesses that, that don't physically mm. have a website. Um, and look, you know, the, a website has a life cycle as well, uh, which, 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 you know, is a good thing in, in from a business perspective in the fact that people need to uh, keep innovating they need to keep investing in their websites. Um, so that's where, you know, you, you get a lot of older websites that that when people, say, jumped on the bandwagon, you know, 10 years ago that uh, are out of date because they're not mobile friendly or they're not using modern design trends or they're not jam-packed full of good, helpful, useful content or, or whatever. Mm. It's interesting. I was speaking to somebody the other day around websites and, uh, they their thought was you don't not every business needs a website. Do you think every business does, or uh, would you agree with it that, that not every business does? Well, there's there's really you know in, in talking to business owners over the years, there's really two reasons why you would have a website, and and the first would be uh, for validation. So, uh, like you said, you know, not a lot of businesses need. A, a physical website uh, and the fact that maybe all, a lot of their business comes from purely referrals or, you know, one, one or two sort of strategic partners of, of people that are feeding them work or whatever. Um, and that's reflective for maybe a lot of professional services firms um, like lawyers, accountants, financial planners, whatever. Um, so what they really need is a presence. So that's where a website fits in really nicely into their whole sort of marketing ecosystem um, in the fact that, um, sure, someone's been referred through, but that prospective client is going to go and do their due diligence. They're going to do their research on that um, that professional services firm to make sure that they are who they say they are, they, uh, they walk the talk and they look the part. So that's that's the first reason why someone might have a website, and the second is purely for you know leads and inquiries. So a platform to generate those new leads and inquiries to get new prospective customers coming through the sales funnel. 
Mm, yeah, some good points there. This person, because I, I sort of said to them, I said, I didn't agree with them at first, by the way, when they said uh, not every business has a website. And I said, well, hang on a minute. I said, well, you know, from, from my school of thought, you need somewhere where people can go and get some more information. And I'm calling it like, a, for some people, it's just a digital brochure that's dynamic, right, that changes. Yeah. But, but this person then said to me, said, and, and this is where I sort of started to agree with them, was they said, well, you can do all of that on a Facebook page. Uh, now, the danger with that, of course, is that you don't own it uh, because Facebook can change the rules. But if you look at Facebook these days as an example, Facebook pages aren't just one page. They do allow people to put products, services, testimonials, reviews. You can advertise. You can gather a community of people there. So, you know, are, are you seeing businesses moving more towards sort of social media to be able to uh, use that as their credibility and to be able to have somewhere where people can go and check them out? Or do you think a website is still very important? Look, I, the reason I love a website is, it, as you said, it's an environment that you are 100% in control of. You own it. You can control what it looks like, what it feels like, the content. Um, and and really, when someone's there, um, they're, they're, they're a captive viewer. So you have the ability to tell a story, to potentially um, you know, add value by through content and solve people's problems or go really deep around specific topics. Um, the issue with using, say, Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever is there's so much noise and there's so much clutter and before you know it, um, the user's watching cat videos and, uh, you know, they've completely forgotten about you. So <laughs> that's where, uh, you know, I see... Uh, having having a website, even if it's a really just like simple one page flowing website that gives an over, overview as to who you are, what you do, how you do it, who you do it for, and ultimately how you're solving people's problems in the marketplace. Yeah, great stuff, great stuff. Okay, well, yeah, I think it's important that people know. I mean, if they're going to go down this path of building a website, they've got to know why they're doing it. So what do you think has changed? I mean, you know, you said you started building websites uh, back when you were 15 or whatever, which, you know, I don't know how long. How old are you now? That must be a good a good while ago. Um, 36, yeah. So. <laughs> so it wasn't two years ago, folks. You sound very young, John, so you've done well there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, so all those years ago, you are building websites out of HTML, and back then, I mean, it was totally different. You mentioned before, you know, working on mobile devices versus not. Um, what other things have you seen change over the years that business owners aren't keeping up with? So they are or they aren't keeping, uh, aren't up, keeping with? up with? That they need to be mindful of. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, look, obviously, you know, the whole um, proliferation of mobile devices um, is something that ha- has really sort of um, become more and more important over the last uh, definitely four to five years. Um, have, so have, you, have, you got stats on, have you got stats on the use, like the amount of people using mobile devices versus desktop? Because I'm always, it's always interesting to see how many people have transitioned across now to mobile devices. Yeah, look, it, it, it completely varies from... Um, industry to industry, business to business. So, to give you an example. Uh, my wife has an organic beauty salon, so uh, she, you know, is doing hair removal and spray tans and facials and nails and all that sort of good stuff, right? Um, so, her her sort of customer, obviously females, um, eight, eighteen years upwards. Um, and her mobile usage through her website is through the roof. It's something like 70%, right? Wow. So that mobile mm. experience needed to be a very good one. It needed to be geared around the conversion to ultimately take people's bookings or get them to pick up the phone and, and get in touch. Whereas you look at something like us, so where, you know, an ideal customer for us is maybe like a, a professional service style firm. They may be doing, say, $1 to $5 million in revenue, Um Typically, uh, they're on a desktop for most of the day Um, and when they're in that sort of frame of mind in terms of searching for a partner to assist them with their online stuff, um, our stats are something like 25% of of all mobile usage uh, through our website. So, it's it's sort of like night and day in those two different examples. But, yeah, it ultimately comes down to the industry and the type of business that it is. Yeah, okay, cool. And I th- how do you find out that data? Because you just mentioned, you know, some percentages there. Is there a way that's easy for business owners to work out what percentage are using mobile devices? Yeah, definitely. It, it, so that's all derived from a tool called Google Analytics. So that's a free analytical tool uh, that you've basically got a, a little uh, code, little code snippet that sits in the, the underlying source code of your website. 
Uh, so your web designer should have installed that when they built your website and you can log in at any time and, and check those stats. So it's basically just a report that you can run within Google Analytics to get that data. Yeah, great stuff. Now, you, you, so that was one of the things, and that's quite a big change. Is there other things that business owners aren't keeping up with that they should know about? Yeah, so uh, the the old school approach was uh, where you used to just, like try and cram everything in, say above the fold, and and above the fold is uh, like an old sort of printing term where you'd have your big broadsheet newspapers and be folded in half. So we've got a publication here in Australia called the Australian, and it still uses that format. So you try and get everything, all the important stuff above the fold, i.e., on that first screen that loads. Um, and and the the issue around that was you'd be cramming in all this stuff and you'd have all your you know many many navigation items, um, whereas the real shift now is simplicity, to actually strip back to focus on what is the most important content and and the action for an individual to take on the website. So um, practical implementation of that would be. Uh, say like minimal navigation where you've literally only got say three or four items on your website navigation whereas before you might have 10 you know spread across the whole page Um, or more of that flowing style design where you actually take a user on a journey down the page and using some sort of creative design techniques um, you can actually draw people down so they scroll down and that's really brought about by the mobile devices. People have become more and more accustomed to scrolling through their tablets and their phones. Um, So people uh, with websites, it's it's okay to have a big, long, flowing design because it allows you to uh, present really like, you know, bite-sized chunks of content, especially on a homepage, that you can then flow people through to other internal sections within your site. So that's been a big change in the last few years. That Some some of the old school sort of clients really struggle to get their, uh, wrap their head around. But then, you know, we just point out, say, look at, maybe look at the homepage of the Commonwealth Bank's website and they use these techniques. And this is a big multi-billion dollar organization that, have a, a whole sort of marketing team that are doing conversion rate optimization and know exactly what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, and I think it's important for business owners to really um, to understand the changes and that you, you do, because, I mean, all of these things happen pretty fast. I think I, I read a report somewhere, John, where they were saying that what used to take 30 years to change is now taking three years to change in, in the world. And that's not just with technology uh, on online, but in any technology or anything in life, so things are moving pretty fast. Should should business owners be reviewing their website or redesigning their website on an annual basis, biannual? What what do you recommend? Well, look, the, the product that we're delivering to market is is a bit more of a, a premium sort of bespoke style approach um, where, you know, a business owner is probably investing, say, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars on a really good quality, high class website. They want to look the part. It needs to function well. It needs to load well. It needs to have all the technical uh, aspects covered off on. Um, And because design is such an important part of that, the longevity they get from that is usually, say, like three to five years, assuming that there's no, you know, Complete rapid changes that uh, that are you know come along and completely disrupt the whole you know website mm. approach to things. Um, but look, that's the last one lifespan we're seeing three to five years. If a website's designed well and set up properly, um, it's set up on a good uh, sustainable platform. So the platform that we're using is a tool called WordPress. Uh, WordPress is what they call an open source content management system, which means. It's a bit of software that's free to use, it's free to download. You can shape and mold it to do whatever you need it to do, whether it's a you know, small business website or an online shop or a, maybe like a forum or, or whatever. Um, it's a really good tool. Um, obviously, that needs to be maintained and updated, um, which is where you might partner with a website designer to, to ensure that things are kept up to date and secure and all that sort of stuff. But that's the real lifespan that you should get out of your site if it's done correctly. Yeah, good stuff. And I think that's um, it's important for people to know that. But if you've got one that was built back in the 90s, you probably need to get it updated now. Yeah, uh, definitely. yeah. Well, it's not going to be mobile friendly. Yeah, yeah. That's that's going to be one of the main issues. And, um, you know, it just it, probably not a whole bunch of useful, helpful content on there. It's not, it probably won't be up to speed mm. from a design 
perspective. So there'll be a little bit of work to do. I guess it depends on how competitive your industry is as well online. I think it's, um, you know, for us, I've also seen results where people are marketing on Facebook and it's a total flop if they're sending them to a website that's not mobile responsive because I think a lot of people are clicking on ads in a Facebook feed on their phone. So I also think it depends how you're marketing your business. Would you Would you say that's the case and is there any other examples of that? Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, and and look, uh, like you said, you know, you can you can have a compelling ad and um, hook people that way. But if if where you're landing them is not up to speed, not up to scratch, then it's ultimately going to fall flat. So that's where you know that landing page needs to be, um, uh, you know, focused on the intent. What is the intent that you want? Do you want someone to fill out a form, or do you want them to pick up mm. the phone and get in touch, or whatever? And that that should be the sole purpose of that. Everything else, like website navigation, social media sharing buttons, all that sort of stuff, that should just be stripped away and just focus on what is the one user you want an individual to take. Yeah, good stuff. Well, that's a good that's a good segue to my next question. So I'm reading your LinkedIn profile and it says, I work with small to medium business owners to make them a rock star online, your, your quote. Uh, the ultimate result is a website that generates, gets the phone ringing in your inbox full of inquiries. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm interested to know how you do that because a lot of people claim that. Uh, so how is it that you go about making sure? Because a website is a website. It's going to sit out there. Uh, but unless people are going there, it's not going to do anything. So how do you make sure that that website's converting visitors into inquiries? Okay. So uh, <clears throat> from the outset, there's a really uh, clear intent in, in the fact that before we even uh, you know, do our first bit of design or building first line code, um, there's a really clear strategy in place. So we, we intimately get to understand a client's business, uh, like I said, who they are, what they do, how they do it, who they do it for, and how they're going to measure the success, success of the project. Because too often you hear about these horror stories of failed projects and it just comes down to misaligned expectations because they never really had that conversation. Um, so maybe it needs to look apart. Maybe it needs to generate, I don't know, five new clients a month. Um, we, we have that conversation to, to understand, make sure that we can actually deliver on that. Otherwise, uh, you know, the, the, the project's going to be doomed from the outset. So, um, get really clear on what the outcomes are. Um, from that we hustle, we get busy and we put together a really good looking site. So one that the client is super proud of. Um, but design for design's sake is not enough. It needs to convert. So um, going back to what is the intent? Do we want someone to pick up the phone? Do we want them to fill out a form? Do we want them to opt in for uh, a bit of communication and then, you know, the sales funnel takes over or whatever, right? So um, there's a good balance between those two. Once the site is launched, that's just the start of the journey. So um, we're really clear about that. Uh, we then go into what we call asset creation mode so asset can look like uh, a few different things assets can be content so useful helpful content that genuinely solves people's problems Uh, and that content is published in a consistent basis and usually the platform that it's published on is the blog so that blog is housed within the website Um, and then that that content can be shared through paid traffic uh, such as paid social media advertising through Google AdWords. Uh, it can be shared through email marketing. It can be uh, shared through SEO. So obviously um, good, well-structured content will, should in theory generate uh, search engine traffic, traffic. So people going to Google, typing in that specific problem into Google and then up pops your little helpful blog that solves that problem, right? So that's, a, that's an example of an asset. Um, another asset would be uh, like diagnostic tools. So um, ha- having some sort of tool that actually integrates into your process or your methodology, how you're g- uh, delivering your service or product to the marketplace. Um, and that diagnostic tool might ask you know, a series of questions and then out- uh, the output from that would be some sort of g- uh, automatic report that adds a bunch of value that gives feedback on where potential weaknesses are in someone's business, whether it's HR or whether it's from a payroll perspective or whether it's being a key person of influence. Um, and then so that's, that's an example of another asset. And then really what we do is we review what's working um, and rinse and repeat, do more of the stuff that's working and do some of the stuff that's not. And that's the general sort of uh, cycle that we then get into post-launch of a website. 
Love it, love it. Simple but effective, eh? So tell me, um, you know, what have you found that's working well? Because you, you mentioned content that's helpful and, you know, I think, and you also mentioned earlier that Facebook and that's very noisy, right? So if you're going to get content out there that's going to be shared or going to be helpful, it, you know, is there some rules of thumb? I mean, are the days gone where you can just pay somebody offshore a few bucks to come up with a 300-word article and get a um, good, good result? Do you really, you know, we've got to put more effort in these days? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, bummer, bummer. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, it comes back to, to you, you get what you pay for and, yeah. and ultimately – 300 word article it will largely be you know a junk article that um, that that doesn't add a whole bunch of value so uh, you know people like Gary Vaynerchuk they talk about um, documenting what you're doing so it's not about content for content creation's sake it's actually about documenting you know how you live your life uh, from a business perspective in the fact that you know, today we did this awesome thing for a client and it got really cool results. Um, and here is a 600-word blog post that details exactly what we did for that client, what the problem was that they were facing, how we implemented that solution and what was the outcome that they got from that, you know. So that's just a, a very simple example, but Every business should have examples of that in terms of how they're adding value to the marketplace. So really it's just sort of like that the the mindset you need to be in is just documenting what you're doing from a day-to-day basis, um, putting that in, in a written form and then sharing that with the whole world because ultimately people won't use that information to uh, go out and, and, and do it themselves because they still need a, a website designer. They still need a business coach. They still need an accountant to get in there and do the stuff that they don't want to do or they don't know how to do. So it's not as if you're going to get yourself, you're going to put yourself out of a job, but you're just being as transparent, you're sharing as much as you possibly can, you're building up that trust and rapport the same way your podcast does. Um, and, and ultimately what it's going to do is um, attract uh, people that are already pre-sold to your products or services or your approach or your way of life. Um, and just just genuinely add more value in the marketplace. So content's definitely one way, and you can get that out there yep. and make sure that it's valuable. So that's good. Now, on a content creation point of view, whilst we're still talking about that, is there like should be you be putting content on your website every day, once a week, once a month? Uh, you know, what's your thoughts around how often you should create some content, and stick it up on your website? Look, at the end of the day, it needs to be practical, Ben, and. Um, <clears throat> I'm of the approach it's around prolific, not perfect. So as long as that article is, you know, 70 to 80% there, then, then I'm cool with that. Like I know that it's better than not publishing something. So um, ideally, you know, it might be a, a, a weekly article, fortnightly article. Um, I know, like I, I'm, I'm busy in the trenches as well. So uh, I know that, you know, content creation isn't always high on the list of priorities, but I do make it a priority because it fits into our whole uh, marketing ecosystem nicely. So for me, it's usually uh, an article a week, an article a fortnight if I'm, if I'm really sort of bogged down. Um, but I know at the end of that month, I can then at least get, say, two to three articles out to my email marketing list. I can at least share you know, a weekly post on social media, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Um, I'm doing my bit for my search engine optimization efforts because I know that, that um, by investing in that, it actually generates real dollars in the bank account because we've picked up some really good projects from that. So that's the real motivation and mindset that I'm in. Um, but it ultimately just needs to be practical. And if it's not practical, for the business owner, then you need to look at other solutions, either getting another team member to do it or distributing that through the team, making that um, a set of KPIs for either sales staff or, or key sort of leaders within a business um, to make sure that happens. Yeah, well, you mentioned before about uh, some of these articles could be just documenting what you did for a customer. So uh, in that case, maybe what somebody could do is then set a KPI for a team member to say, you know, every time you help someone once a week, you've got to pick a customer that you've helped and document how you did it. Yeah, in a case study format. So case studies is mm-hmm. another example of a blog post, just probably with a little bit more structure to it. 
Yeah, nice stuff, nice stuff. Now, what else should somebody have on their website? We talked before about generating leads. I mean, content is going to get them there and it's going to build up that trust and credibility. Uh, what have you seen work really well? Is uh, you know, it's just something to be opted into? Is it having a chat box on your, uh, on your website? What's working well? Yeah, this, so there's probably two things that come to mind. Uh, the first is video. So um, in our instance, it's, it's almost what we call like the why video. Why do you get out of bed every day and, and be an awesome business coach or why do I get out of bed every day and be a website designer? And usually that's in the format of, say, a 60 to 120-second video and it ultimately answers that question. And by answering that question, it actually gives a really good insight for a prospective user as to <clears throat> who you are as, as an individual, as a business owner, um, and why they might want to work with you. So it creates that more powerful connection. Um, if that's done, say, face to video, then when someone does actually pick up the phone, get in touch. It's a warmer conversation. You were saying to me prior to we started this chat, your, your podcast does that exact same thing in terms of um, it creates that intimate connection um, with your client base, with your prospective clients, um, and people come up and they feel like they know you. So that's the same impact that uh, a video can potentially have. Um, and then the second part of that would be having some flagship bit of content, something of extreme value um, that you give away completely free of charge. So um, everyone has these assets within their business. Um, they just need to be sort of packaged up into some sort of digital format. And in my example, so I, I spent a year writing my book um, and, you know, uh, created all this awesome, useful, helpful content, but then I wanted to um, be able to share that on a much larger scale than then just sending that out to individuals here and there or, you know, sending it to people who purchase it. So uh, what I did was I employed a voiceover artist someone with very smooth, docile tones, uh, much smoother than mine, and they sat in a chair and pretty much recorded that from start to finish. And uh, and then we packaged that up and people can download that 100% free of charge. They just opt in for it and um, they can listen to that on their, their phones while they're you know, jogging or driving or, or whatever. So that's something that I'm adding a ton of value, giving away free of charge. I'm building a list at the same time. Um, and, and adding value into people's lives. Nice stuff, mate. Nice. And well done on your book, by the way. I do love the title, Love at First Sight, and spelt spelled S-I-T-E, which is quite a good play on words there, a no BS guide to getting your website firing, uh, which I okay. think every business owner wants to do, my friend, let me tell you. <laughs> that's it. That's it. So that's interesting. So video, now when you talk about video, is that in your blog post or video just should be prevalent on your website so people can engage the eyes rather than just um, reading they can actually watch something? Yeah, so that video, the, the why video that I was talking about would be front and centre. So um, <clears throat> it would be literally, you know, that top banner section of your homepage ideally and, and, and how we implement that. I mean, I can, I'll, I'll, we can include some links in the show notes, but typically we'll pull out like a five or ten second loop. That video loop will rotate through on the homepage. So it's going to add a bit of movement um, and give people a glimpse that there is something of value there. Um, and then there's like a big fat play button. So when they hit the play button, typically what will happen is that that video, the two-minute video, will then pop up above, um, and then you'll have the full audio and the full video experience. So that should be front and center. Um, and you know, I really encourage people to, to invest in that, um, to, to get – you know, someone with a decent camera, with some video editing experience, um, and actually, you know, tell your story, tell your message, why it is you do what you do. The other thing I've got to um, give you, like, give you some kudos for is your website absolutely is actually stunning. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of web developers, I can't say that about. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I think I think that's you know that's proof is in the pudding, isn't it? You know, I look at your website; it's engaging. There's stuff moving around. It's simple, but it's got a, 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 a you know cool images. All, all the images are very uh, engaging. Um, you know, I can see some video moving in the background. Like you said, that I can click on. Um, you know, it's very cleverly done. So I think if people want to see uh, how your website is done, it's probably a great example of how a website can be built to be effective. Yeah, yeah. Look, and that's just one way of doing it. 
Um, and it, we, we, you know, there's a big portfolio that works there, and, mm. and uh, we've tried to segment by a different industry. So if people are looking for ideas, then then you know, get it, check it out. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Now, if somebody's listening to this and they've got a website that's not converting, and they feel like they're not getting enough visitors to their website, or they they think they need to change something, um, where do you think they should start? What's what what should somebody have you got a checklist that people could go through, or a few pointers where they can start to look at what they to see what's what what needs improvement? Yeah, well, the, look, the book is is really the the answer to that question. So, the the book isn't a um, how to guide to build a website, right? So if you read that, you're still not going to know how to build a website. But what it is is a really, really detailed, um, uh, documented way of um, <clears throat> a understanding the bigger picture in terms of the strategy, uh, what you actually need to do, and the mindset you need to be in to physically get results out of your website. Um, how to then brief a website designer because that's where we see over and over and over again where projects go pear-shaped because um, there isn't that solid foundation of a briefing. Um, website designers don't understand the business and the outcomes that the client wants and the clients just don't know what they don't know so they don't write, ask all the questions up front and it's just those misaligned expectations. Um, and then uh, it covers off on you know WordPress as, as a platform, as a tool, the importance of good quality design, um, and then it talks about content, so how to actually build great content and ideas around that, and then making sure that content can then get found, uh, and then a, more of a technical checklist in terms of stuff that everyone should be doing post launching their website. Okay, what's well, a good good opportunity then to share a link? Where can people find that book? Because I think they'll find that extremely valuable. Yeah, we'll put a link in the show notes, but it's it's on our uh, website. Five f i v e b y f i v e dot com dot au, and just click on the uh, the book link there in the navigation. You'll be able to opt in for the audio book. And uh, if if you're more of a hard copy person, which I am, uh, you can also grab yourself a hard copy as well. Yeah, so that's 5by5.com.au forward slash book if you want to get there quickly. I'll put it in the show notes anyway so people can go straight there. And I can see you've got cool. th- three links there, the Kindle version, the hard copy, or you can download the free audio book, which is my favorite way of doing it. I've already clicked on that. Uh, I'll be getting that straight away and <laughs> having a good listen to that. I love, <laughs> I love a good audio book, John. I hope the I hope the tones are very nice and dulcet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Now, is there anything that I haven't asked that you, that you think I should have asked for the listeners about their website? Oh, that's a, that's a big question. Um, I, I just really encourage people to take stock of where they're at. If they're dissatisfied, um, be really clear as to what success actually does look like um, and then, you know, figure out what you've got to do to get there. So yeah. that's, that's really like people just actually don't spend enough time. They, they know in their gut that something's not working, but they just don't know why. So taking a step back, taking that helicopter view, um, you know, if you're doing the same stuff you've always done, you'll get the same results. So that's probably, you know, my, uh, my bit of advice there. Yeah, and then mm. um, and really just, you know, just – ultimately you want to partner with someone who's going to be able to deliver the goods. Um, so spend the time up front. You know, it, it is like a marriage in the fact that you got to get everything out on the table. Um, you don't want anything left unsaid. Um, the other thing that people, we see time and time again is um, people don't always uh, value the the time the effort that goes into delivering a good quality product so there might be just a little bit of sort of um, readjustment there from uh, like a client's perspective just to understand well you know if if you you get a five hundred dollar website built then really and, and this is driving you know ninety five percent of your sales then how much value are you actually putting on that um, so you, you get out what you put in um, and then the, the tail end of that is um, this is technology and and the internet and stuff changes and it's and your website is no different to say your phone your laptop computer um, there's some technical stuff that needs to be maintained and updated so wordpress needs to be kept up to date and secure your plugins need to be kept up to date and secure there needs to be proactive security monitoring 
Um, there needs to be daily backups of your website. So that's just like a general sort of operational thing that needs to happen on a day-to-day basis. Um, <clears throat> and invariably, as your business grows, changes, evolves, the website should be reflective of that. So you're going to need an ongoing relationship with a, a website designer. And ideally, that's in some sort of, uh, you know, retainer style model where um, if, if, you know, things do uh, break or explode or whatever, you can pick up the phone and get your problems uh, quickly and efficiently solved because um, like I said if, if 95% of your sales are coming from your website you know you can't afford to have that thing go down for a day two days three days have it sitting there broken so that's really where um, you know we have those conversations and say um, we're going to design and build you an awesome site but we're also this is a long-term relationship where we're going to continue to add value and we're going to demonstrate that value and we're going to be here for you when you need us. Yeah, and that's great because sometimes, I mean, as good as you are, I mean, I'm sure there's times when you build something that then needs to be tweaked to get it working, yep. that, you know, get, get it working to the optimum level where it's generating the leads you want it to generate. So you want that ongoing relationship. That's a good point. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not set and forget. It should be that sort of that growth mindset where um, the launching of the site is the start of the journey and that's where you continue to evolve and innovate. Now, you mentioned, you know, people getting $500 websites, and I think one of the challenges is that, you know, there is a vast array of people out there building websites, and some of them are doing them for 500 bucks. You know, you get people who are offshoring the work, and because labor mm-hmm. is much cheaper there. Uh, what what do you think someone typically should expect to invest in a decent website? Look, it varies, and, and um, you can certainly get really cost-effective solutions out there, and there's nothing wrong with going off-site, uh, offshore. There's... there's um, if, if you know how to brief someone, if you know how to control the process, if you know how to be very proactive from a communication perspective and you're really clear on the outcome you want, then happy days because there's no reason why you couldn't provide a really rock-solid brief um, to an offshore company and get a really good outcome. Um, but the issue is that um, business owners, especially here in Australia, will go into it and say, oh, you know, my mate got a $1,000 site and um, it works all right for him. Uh, and then, you know, he, f- he finds someone off offshore, um, but they fall off the face of the planet or they disappear or he didn't brief him properly. And then, you know, he's really disappointed at the outcome. So um, that, that's something to, to be really clear on. Uh, really, by working with an Australian company, what you are doing is, is you're getting um, an insight. So obviously the staff here in Australia have, have a really good insight into um, cultural subtleties, um, uh, just general sort of like design. So, you know, making sure appropriate images are, are, are picked and they're not the same old, same old stock photos you see over and over again. Um, and then just general sort of, you know, uh, being able to deliver a, a, a much better product. And, and the reality of the situation is that you're going to pay for more for that experience, but you're probably going to get a better outcome. Um, so, like I said, our sort of investment, um, you're going to get a really good website for about eight to $10,000 and it's going to last you, you know, three to five years. So, if you extrapolate that, that out over an annual basis, it's, you know, for, for, for a good quality website, it should generate um, much more uh, than, than, than what that annualized mm-hmm. figure from an investment perspective would be. So... Yeah. yeah, for me, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. I mean, and you, you you hit on a point there. Like this is a this is something that's now selling for you. And I think a lot of people, because a lot of people ask me, oh, I've had this quote for a website, and then if, especially if it's a complex e-commerce site, they might say, look, it was twenty or thirty grand, and I go and it you know integrates with my uh, my CRM and et cetera, et cetera, it notifies salespeople, does all sorts of fancy stuff. Yep. And I go well, and they go, it just seems like a lot of money. I said, well, how much would it cost you to go and hire a shop? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, take yeah. out a lease and hire a staff yeah. member. Yeah. And and just to fit out a lot, I mean, I know a guy who just recently set up a new barbershop near my place, and I asked him how much was his fit out because it's a stunning fit out, and it was one hundred and fifty grand. I'm thinking, well, you know, yeah. you know, fitting out a shop and 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 getting that right in uh, actual, you know, on on site like 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 an actual real estate in the flesh is expensive. You know, the good thing about websites, I think, which I love, is that it's actually quite ch- cheap compared to that to set up a store online or set up your business online. Um, and the other benefit is if you want to renovate it, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Oh yeah, 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 and scalable as well. Mm. So you need you could go and throw a couple of grand worth of Google AdWords or Facebook ads or whatever at it, and you know, in theory, it should scale really nicely. 
Yeah, yeah, you're not geographically limited. Well, mate, we're just about out exactly. of time, and I know we've we've plugged the book, so people can go to five by five dot com dot au forward slash book and go and grab that book uh, in any way, shape, or form that you like. If you want the audio book, it is free to download. Uh, is there any other way that uh, people can get in contact with John? Or is that the best thing for them to do? Is just go and grab that book. Yeah, we'll hit uh, connect on LinkedIn. It'd be awesome to connect on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. Uh, we're on Instagram. So um, you, know, you can grab all those links either in the show notes or from our website. So. Yeah, thanks, Ben. No, absolute pleasure, mate. It's, it's so good to uh, to have you come on the Business Brain Food podcast. People are struggling all over the place, as you would know, uh, with getting their website working. And I think uh, it's always good to get the insights of people that have been doing it for as long as you have uh, and as successfully as you have, mate. So once again, thanks so much for coming on the Business Brain Food podcast and sharing your knowledge. Pleasure. Thank you. All that is left to do, my friend, is the 60-second scramble. Are you ready for that? Oh, fight up. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Uh, favorite <laughs> app on your phone? Oh, favorite app. Uh, I have to be Spotify. Love my music. Yeah, me too. I love that too. Do you have a hidden talent? Hidden talent. Can I've been practicing doing a handstand. So I can stand on my hands for about 60 seconds now. That is a pretty cool talent. When you can walk down steps, we'll need a video. <laughs> uh, what's, your, what's, what's your biggest addiction? Oh, I'd have to say coffee. Coffee's up there. Yeah, I think that would be for many people. That would have to be uh, uh, for, for many. Uh, have you got a favourite quote you could uh, share with the listeners? Oh, so many, so many. Um, favourite quote. Oh, I just literally did Date with Destiny. Uh, so many quotes there. Um, I'm going to have to come back to you on that, mate. Yeah, you can say pass. That's cool. Number one tip for uh, being more efficient. Um, be really clear on the outcome you want and delegate ruthlessly. Delegate ruthlessly. That's a fantastic tip. (laughs) But do not abdicate. Do not abdicate. I mean, you were talking about offshoring websites, and I've seen people offshore websites where they did not give a good brief and they were very disappointed, and I think it's because they abdicated, didn't delegate. So make sure you delegate. Yep. 100%. 100%. All right, mate. Well, once again, thanks for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure having you, mate. And I know the listeners would have got a lot out of that. Cheerio. Thank you, Ben. Business brain food. Well, there you go. Once again, a very, very uh, impactful interview, giving you you know, blow by blow some of the things that you can do to get your website working. Make sure you go to 5by5.com.au forward slash book and go and grab yourself a copy of that book. Uh, and I will be giving away a hard copy of his book. Uh, and the way that you get a hold of that or go and find out about how to do that is, first of all, it would have to be close to the release of this, uh, this podcast, so the end of June 2017. Um, I'm going to do the giveaway in a couple of weeks. So, you know, it gives you time to listen to the podcast if, you, if you've just tuned in maybe a week late or something because you're just catching up on episodes. Uh, but the way that you win this book is you've got to go to the Business Brain Food group and join the group. It's on Facebook. So you go to facebook.com slash groups slash business brain food, or you can simply just search for business brain food in the search bar at the top of the Facebook page if you're on a PC or um, on a Mac, and you then click the groups tab and you'll see it come up. It's a it's a uh, private group, so you have to join, and somebody, one of the admin team will, uh, will approve you your membership. And once you're in there, um, have a look at the pinned post at the top of the page. It'll explain to you how you get a copy of John Hollenberg's book, Love at First Sight, a no BS guide to getting your website firing. And uh, I'll have a copy of that to give away. So really excited about that. So make sure you jump into that group and you come and hang out with us there. Besides the fact that I'm giving away a book, it's also a, an awesome place to hang out and just chat all things business. as a stack of us in there having a conversation about what's working and what's not. And you can ask questions in there and uh, get help from other business owners. And it's a fantastic fun place to be and you're missing out so make sure you get in there alrighty well that's pretty much it for this week's show if you are enjoying the podcast please go to the iTunes store and leave an honest review and rating I do read them all love to get your feedback and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the new shorter format of the show and I look forward to talking to you again next week until then have a very profitable day You can fly high than the sky, shine brighter than the stars. You can have all you ever wanted. Yeah. Don't you don't you. The Business Brain Food Podcast is brought to you by MaxMyProfit.com.au. Head to MaxMyProfit.com.au to download your free business planning template today.